Hello and welcome to another in the integration series from Rygate College Maths. What we're looking at in this video is integration by inspection. Now this is typically where students start to find integration quite tricky. So you may want to rewatch this video several times in order to get the concepts in your head. Effectively, what we're doing is we're using the rules and things that we've looked at so far in the previous videos and integrating this type of function, a function within a function. The important thing is thinking about, like we said before, thinking about integration as the reverse of differentiation. That can really help. So for instance, let's think about this type of question. We are trying to integrate cos of 4x minus 1, for instance. So, like before, we need to think about what could differentiate to get us cos of 4x minus 1. Well, we know that sine differentiates to cos. So, let's start by thinking about sine of 4x minus 1. So, if we differentiate that, sine goes to cos, the bracket stays there, and then we times by the derivative of the bracket. Now in this case, it's the coefficient of x. But later on, when we start look at uh, when we look at a video on the reverse chain rule, we'll generalize this idea even further. So this means that the integral of 4 cos 4x minus 1 is sine of 4x minus 1. Remember, integration is the reverse of differentiation. So the integral of cos 4x minus 1 is a quarter sine 4x minus 1 plus c. So that's our final answer. So this idea of thinking about well, what could differentiate to get to here is very important. In reality, in the exam, you wouldn't be expected to do all this working. This is the only line that we'd expect to see. So you need to get very confident and very quick at doing this kind of thing. So let's have a look at a couple at a few examples. This one, this time I'll go through each of them separately. So we've got integrate 1 plus x cubed. So the longer method, let's consider what could differentiate to give us something where this is involved. Now, because of what we did with the chain rule and about brackets differentiating, we know that brackets on the whole follow similar rules to our normal polynomial differentiation. So we know that when we differentiate a bracket, we multiply by the power, reduce the power by one, then times by the derivative of the bracket, which in this case, the bracket differentiates to one. So if we differentiate 1 plus x to the 4, we get 4 1 plus x cubed, which means when we integrate 1 plus x all cubed, we get a quarter 1 plus x to the 4 plus c. But again, this line here is the only line we'd expect to see. 
So with this next example here, we can see that we're integrating 2x plus 4 all cubed. So we need to think again what would differentiate to give us something where this is involved. Some of you may already be able to spot the patterns, spot the trick, but we'll go through it a little bit longer method again. So like before, we know that brackets on the whole behave like polynomial differentiation. So we multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1, but we times by the derivative of the bracket, which in this case is 2. So therefore, the integral of 2x plus 4 cubed is going to be 1 eighth. 2x plus 4 to the 4 plus c. Okay, so it's not just a case of increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, like we had before. We've got this similar added element. So in general, if you've got a bracket with a power, you can think about it this way. If we're integrating ax plus b to the n, you can see the bracket stays there. The power increases by 1. And then where did this 1 over 8 come from? Well, that's the derivative of the bracket times the new power, okay, here. So in this case, it's going to be a times n plus 1, then plus c on the end. Now, this is not a general rule that's given in the formula book. It's better to just be able to think about this kind of problem. This rule also only works if this bracket is linear. Okay, with the previous two examples, they were, in general, not necessarily. Later on, when we look at the reverse chain rule again, we will look at how we can deal with if this bracket isn't linear and kind of what our integral has to look like in order for that to work. So let's continue looking at some examples. Let's move away from brackets and let's have another look at a trig one. So we've got cos of 2x plus 3. Now we've already seen how this one works, so I'm not going to go through the full working like we did before. So cos integrates the sine. The bracket stays there. And then we divide by the coefficient of x and then add c. See how there's no working? This is what I would expect to see once you've got used to it. But for now, if you can't do that, do the longer method where you consider uh, a particular function and think about what would, how that differentiation works. Two more examples. One we've already kind of looked at. So hopefully this one should be no problem. You should all be able to integrate to get that. If you can't, go and watch the previous video on integration using exponentials and logs. The last one, a little bit more tricky. We've got 1 over 3x plus 2. So it's 1 over something, which generally means it's going to involve a ln in some way. So we need to consider some 
something that could differentiate to give us entirely 3x plus 2 on the bottom. Now we haven't really looked at functions of this type, but what do you think could work? If you said ln of 3x plus 2, you'd be in the right ballpark. If we differentiate that, so this is where things start to get a little bit trickier. So when we differentiate this, we can think about the chain rule. Our u function would be 3x plus 2. Differentiating ln of that, ln u, gives us 1 over u. So we can see that it's going to be something over 3x plus 2. Here, we're now going to differentiate this bit, and that goes on the top. So let me just go through that a little bit slower. If we think about the chain rule, we can consider y equals ln u, where u is 3x plus 2. Using the chain rule, we differentiate both. Oops, dy by du. So therefore, dy by dx is 1 over u times 3, which gets us to this 3 over 3x plus 2. How do we now get from here to here? Well, we divide by 3. So the integral of 1 over 3x plus 2 is a third ln 3x plus 2 plus c. You may already be able to spot quite nice patterns, and those patterns are really useful when we have linear functions here. Typically, it's thinking about, well, how would this function behave if this wasn't a linear function? And then divide by the coefficient of x. Try not to fixate on that too much, because when we start getting onto the more complicated different uh, integration, having to use the reverse chain rule, this is where it starts getting a little, that's where it starts getting a little bit more difficult to think of a general rule. But for now, this is a good uh, point to stop and have a practice of using this kind of integration by inspection method. As I said, as you practice more, you should be able to get to this kind of position here, where you can just look at a function and go, oh, it's this. Whereas when you start, you may be having to do this method to have a think about what could work. Thank you for watching.